Welcome traders, welcome to this week's Midweek Market Focus. I am your presenter, Adam Harris, and uh, I'm going to, I have the good fortune of being able to give you some feedback about what the market conditions are like currently, where the opportunities lie for you to be taking trades, um, any particular charts that I have concerns about where I would avoid taking any trades regardless of your strategy, and uh, and hopefully some adding some uh, educational knowledge to your existing um to, I guess, to your existing skills and just pushing you a little bit further outside of your comfort zone. Um, so uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to quickly take a run through the stock market overview, uh, have a look at uh, how the uh, equities cash markets are, are looking, if there's still some good opportunities there for us to uh, take trades. Then I'm going to have a look at the currencies overview, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to review a, uh, a trade call that uh, I did, um, it was about a week and a half ago. Um, and just run through that. I've actually recorded that separately on the weekend because I did it kind of shortly after uh, that particular setup, and then we'll jump across to that, um, and then I'll uh, wrap up uh, and try and keep tonight's um, tonight's midweek market focus uh, kind of closer to under an hour rather than keep running over. Um, so let's jump right into the uh, cash markets. We'll have a look here at the uh, S&P. So the first one, I'm just going to bring it up here. And uh, as you can see, just looking at the top, so I'll keep uh, the top chart will be my weekly, and I'll keep the daily down at the bottom. <clears throat> and you can just see here, we've got a really nice trend on the uh, weekly. Everything looks uh, relatively good, but a little bit of divergence in here. Um, that just is normally an indication that the monthly is becoming a little bit overextended. But the monthly is not, uh, is looking fine at this point in time. It's coming up to a big, big round number, <clears throat> 2,000. And so that's likely going to present some issues. But from a weekly perspective, uh, we look like we still have a bit of juice left, and we're just trying to get through this 1900 level. Not looking too bad. It's not the prettiest thing I've ever seen. But jumping down to the daily, there's still bullishness. So um, at this point in time, I'm not looking to start shorting uh, the markets. I'm um, still very much bullish. And uh, if I jump across and have a look at the Dow, this is still bullish at this point in time. <clears throat> it's definitely not as bullish as it was a few weeks ago, and that doesn't necessarily mean anything. It uh, it just implies that it uh, could very much be going through that monthly, very much through that monthly consolidation, and actually getting ready to go a lot further. So that's why I'm very. I mean, this is a beautiful monthly pullback here. A very nice monthly, nice bullish bar, and uh, we've broken to the upside for that. So at this point in time, this is a perfectly bullish chart and is actually looking as though it has every intention of pushing up further. Um, so there's no signs at this point to show that, uh, other than the fact there's a bit of resistance here, but there's nothing to show that it, it is not wanting to continue onwards and upwards. Uh, the daily is a little bit messy because of that, but as you can see, we've now pulled back and we started to push on upwards, I think. So once we break to this level, I think we're going to see a big, big run. Um, and so I'm just going to reiterate at this point, Although it isn't just flowing upwards, it's definitely not looking bearish. It is still looking very much bullish. Let's have a look at the Nasdaq. Nasdaq is uh, which has got the Apple, uh, which has got Apple contained in it. Uh, still looking good. He has a relatively uh, bullish bar. It's not a buyer's bar, but it's, a, it's got a nice little bit of a rejection there. It's come through on the previous resistance. <clears throat> so here are this previous level of resistance that we had uh, over here. Uh, price has managed to break through, come back and reject that, and just uh, looking looking quite nice and uh, looking quite uh, sustainable. So you'll see here we had a bit of a downtrend on the daily. We had lower highs, lower lows, and that really has to do more with the, one, with the weekly pullback. Uh, and so I am anticipating at this point that we will turn around this week, and if not this week, next week, and we'll see price start to carry on up. I'm not too worried about it because most of the other charts are still looking quite bullish. So again, over here, we've had a bit of a pullback. We broke up to new highs, and we've kind of gone nowhere since then. Um, and here... We're still sitting basically at this level. Again, not completely uh, concerned at this point. We're still in an uptrend. This is very much our previous uh, our previous low and our most recent high. So at this point, not really concerned about that. Our prior high was here. Our previous big, really big low was uh, probably down here. If we really want to compare it to, we've got a couple of weekly, um, a couple of daily kind of pullbacks here. But so far, we're still very much in an uptrend, and again, not really prepared to start shorting the market at this point in time. But it is well and truly possible we might falter around and mess around for a few weeks while we go through another consolidation. We just had that uh, before we then push on to new highs. So uh, uh, currently, I'm still bullish on these markets. Um, uh, as soon as I start to see uh, lower highs, lower lows, or a more drastic pullback, I'll assess that. But 
uh, it's not really such a, it's just not a very big high at the moment. Okay, looking then at the FTSE, uh, we're still bullish here. As you can see, we've continued to maintain our higher lows. All right, so we've got, we're looking at our extreme lows here. We've still pulled back there. That was really nice, going through that. Of all the equity markets, the FTSE is the weakest currently. I think it's actually underperforming even against the DAX, and this is just the FTSE 100. Uh, it's not the, it says FTSE uh, 350 is very similar, but the FTSE 250 is not so bad. So anyway, we're still producing high lows. We're still very much in an uptrend. We're just hitting this strong level of resistance that we've, been trying to get through for quite a while, which is kind of that 6,800 mark. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that if the rest of the markets ultimately push on, we'll see the FTSE break through that, and we'll really see it move. It'll probably just slice right through 7,000. But <clears throat> at any rate, now looking at the fact, today it's broken above the high of that. You can see here on the daily, we've produced a double bottom. Very nice little double bottom, a bounce of that bounce, and it's headed up and away. It's broken above this high, so we've now officially gone into an uptrend on the daily. And so that looks very nice. Good opportunity for any of those of you who are watching this, any of my delegates. This is now continuing to make, uh, it's going to take another run at that 6,800 level. Um, <clears throat> and so, you know, if this is the weakest of the bunch and it's still looking nice and bullish, then I would definitely say we are still very much in an uptrend, uh, longer term uptrend as well. And so my focus is predominantly on mainly power plays to the upside and looking for the, the cleanest, most purest of the uptrending stocks and sectors as well to be trading that. Um, still nice and bullish there, looking pretty good. Let's see how the DAX is doing compared to that. So you can see the DAX is actually a lot stronger by comparison. This is the German uh, stock exchange, central stock exchange, and uh, we're still looking a lot more uh, bullish by comparison to that. And a uh, little bit of a downtrend here, but still looking bullish. If I then switch it to the monthly. Oh, wow, we are looking really good at this. Iris, you, uh, you're my lady trading this in uh, Stuttgart. So uh, you'll know all about this pullback here. We've pulled back to these moving averages. We've got a really nice rejection. Low test here. All of you should know about low test bars. Really nice rejection of that level. And that is looking quite good. So if we then go back down to the weekly, you can see here that for a while we had a lower high, lower low, and now we've broken up above. Last week we broke up above that, and this is this week. So this implies that we're now about to go back into a weekly uptrend. Um, and so what we should see is a, a nice push through, probably heading up to that 10,000 mark. Um, but yeah, there's some good opportunities here. So I'll, I would consider, certainly consider resuming taking trades back to the upside on the daily here, despite the fact that this looks like a downtrend. Uh, when you look at the monthly, you can actually see that the monthly has had a nice pullback, a much of a due pullback, really needed, you know, um, a much needed long overdue pullback to the moving averages and has rejected that and is now indicating its intentions to continue going to the upside. Um, and so therefore, that means that we're still pretty good to trade this long. Um, I'm happy with that. Next, 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 next. Uh, we have, um, so that's pretty good. So basically the equity markets are still looking nice and bullish, still providing you with some, some good trading opportunities. Um, and, you know, if in doubt you're looking to trade, I guess the most, uh, I guess you'd be looking to trade the most uh, aggressive of all the different stocks. Let's see if this still comes up. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so we've got the FTSE 350. Let's have a look at some of these stocks. Anglo-American is okay. I'm looking for stuff like, Let's see, Associated British Foods. There we go. Beautiful. Look at this. Absolutely perfect. All you Forex traders are looking at this going, oh, why can't our Forex charts look like this? Um, really, really nice. Nice little reversal signal here. We, it looks like, in fact, we might even be close to breaking up above the high, and at which point we'll then be resuming an uptrend. N really nice liquid stock. Very nice. Look at that MACD. Perfect, perfect, perfect convergence. No trend issues there. Nicely rested and recuperated now and starting to head over to the upside. Not every particular stock is like this, but this, again, great trading opportunities. So all looking very, very, very good. So quite happy with those. How's the Greco doing? Okay, not looking so great on that one. But again, there's some 350 charts to be working through. So there's quite a few opportunities here. Um, okay, just running through these quickly to see if I see anything else that looks nice. There we go. There's a nice little beautiful bullish candle, bullish inside bar, bouncing off the previous level of resistance. Oh, man, that is a clear buy signal if I ever saw one. So we have a nice gap up. We come down. We've closed the gap. We're now ready to start climbing. So again, you're looking for power plays to go long to the upside, looking very, 
good. Okay, very happy with that. No divergence. We have complete convergence here, which is brilliant. Uh, if I look and I compare this high to this high, you can see it's climbing, and that's what that is. So we had a nice little monthly uh, uh, consolidation or weekly consolidation. It's now worked its way out of the system. Where we're now resuming that uh, convergence again, which is fantastic. So again, lots of nice opportunities there. Okay, so um, I think we can jump straight across to the currency market. Let's go and have a look at that dollar index. So that dollar index is very much in a range. Don't forget it's mixing up its highs and lows. If you look at the monthly, and you take away these moving averages, which is often a very confusing thing, because most people, uh, a lot of new traders are very kind of confused about what, how they're supposed to read this. Essentially, with trading, you kind of should be able to work with simply with horizontal levels, okay, support and resistance levels. So we've got these three kind of areas here, and we've got this very, very strong level of support that we've never quite been able to break, and there's a lot of buy orders at that, and we're coming down to that, and it's reluctant, um, and we're very much in a range, which means that when price is in a range, it doesn't really know what it wants to do, and so it is inclined to break the rules and not really behave, because it doesn't have to behave, because it doesn't really know what it wants to do, whereas once it's trending, it'll tend to stick to certain trending behavioral characteristics versus ranging behavioral characteristics. So having a closer look here, what I'd like you to observe is that uh, in terms of the longer term kind of trend, uh, in fact, actually, let's go back up to that monthly one. So at this point in time, I'm not too concerned about uh, this trend is still very much to the downside, still a lot of pressure on it to push it down to the downside. I am aware of these mixture of highs and lows here, but uh, certainly there's not enough evidence here to show that this is intending to turn around at this point in time. So I'm still bearish on this and uh, starting to look at what appear to be lower highs and lower lows that we have forming in here. But again, as I said, we're in a range. Um, and so for you new traders, uh, where you're going to think that, the, you, you know, you, you're going to struggle to feel that you have nailed analyzing the market properly because the market is going to chop and change. And um, to be honest, there is definitely a lot more ranging in the market at the current moment to do with, uh, probably more to do with the dollar uncertainty than anything else. But what I just wanted to say to you is, you know, we've had periods in the history where, it, for a large part, we've always been trending. And uh, for a long time now, going back to 2011, our, the U.S. dollar has been contained completely within, you know, 80 to 84, and it and it hasn't done that for a long time. Before that, it was trending quite a bit, and so the problem with that is it's capable of changing f literally from one week to the next. This is one of the reasons why the euro is kind of all over the place, the pound, the majors, the majors are all are kind of all over the place, um, and so it's one of the reasons that I advise heavily against sticking to just the majors. Um, I've never seen anyone produce great results if by just sticking to the majors. I've never seen that happen. So just a little concerned about that. Um, uh, and so really looking for you to identify good trending charts for your trending strategies and then taking it from there. Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Um, just checking something here quickly. Hmm. Okay, just need to do some stuff here. Uh, oh, I see. Okay, just, sorry, something on the side there. Okay, so yeah, so I'm having a look here just to see what happens. We're still producing lower highs. We've got a, even here in our most recent history, we've got a lower high, lower low. So we're within this range. and We've got a nice little bearish inside bar here, which is a potential, an indication. It's a good signal for a potential break to the downside uh, and a continuation at least down to this level where I do anticipate we will have a reaction against it. Um, and in terms of the daily, we had a nice little daily downtrend. We had a pullback, which broke that trend. And now it looks as though it's trying to resume back down to that. So what I'm going to do now is this just implies that although we're ranging we're all over the place, it's kind of 55 or 60% bearish as opposed to kind of 50-50. Uh, it's just that little bit more bearish than it is bullish. Let's jump across and have a look at the Swissy and then compare the two. And so here you can see the Swissies trend, the downtrend is much clearer and stronger. So this is a good kind of representation of how the dollar uh, is probably going to behave. Um, and so here, okay, even today we're pushing back up. So we're still not ready yet. It's not out of its, hasn't got it out of its system just yet. Um, but yeah, so it's coming up. We'll see what happens when it reacts to this area here at a previous level of uh, support or resistance. Not a beautiful trend, but that's the implication. If we then flip this and look at the euro, we're seeing the kind of the inverse of that, which is showing you here that we're in a very good uptrend on the euro at any rate, very nice uptrend on that uh, weekly chart. 
And on the daily, we uh, had a very nice little setup that occurred on Friday, and I saw bullish inside bar, uh, followed by an outside bullish bar, uh, followed by a low test. Um, so this price action, by the way, for beginner traders, this is not quali this is not good quality trading conditions. So in case you've been trading the last week on the euro and you got your ass kicked, uh, chances are that's why, because the euro is looking really, really bad. If you go down to the lower time frames, you go down to say the 60 minute time frame. You'll see there is no clear trend here. Uh, price is there, and then it drops, and then it climbs up, it drops, then it goes there, then it shoots up, then it comes, drops all the way down, and then it shoots up. That that is not what we would call optimal trading conditions. What we're really looking for is very, very, very steady price action. Um, we're looking for something a little bit more like this, where we can see the price action is consistently going in one direction, and at the moment it's all over the place. So uh, that is definitely explaining well. That it is explaining that these conditions are not are not that great. Okay, so please be cautious here. It's more bullish than bearish, believe it or not. It's uh, this is a reversal bar. It's triggered uh, with this bullish bar, then rejected the lows, and it's just it's all over the place. So chances are uh, we're going through something quite big, and we could find that suddenly uh, price just does this one day, just climbs up straight up like that. Okay, having a look at the pound. So I'm still bullish, bullish on the euro at this point in time. Uh, here we go. Having a look at the pound, we have a very interesting little setup occurring here. Uh, GBP is in a bit of an interesting thing. This is a previous level of resistance. Price was really struggling to kind of get through there. Came down, rejected it, broke through, came back to retest it, which is a very normal market behavior to break through and retest it, and now has buyers returning into the market. However, when you look at the daily, we have a very clear downtrend. We have lower highs and lower lows. Okay, so we have a downtrend occurring here. So what we're looking to see is we ultimately need to see uh, next week, we need to see price break the high of this so that we can have price starting to head away from this level again. And at this point, this will then become an uptrend. And so that's what I'm anticipating will happen. The biggest obstacle for the pound is going to be this level here. So I think what we're probably going to see is that once the pound gets up to this level, and uh, we see the euro climb up as well, so the euro will then sort of try to get back up to this level. Uh, once it gets up to about that level, uh, it's going to try and do that. And then if we look at the Swissy, I think we're going to see the Swissy come back down to, say, this level, for example. It's going to try to come back down. They're all going to get there at exactly the same point, and at that exact point, the dollar index is going to reach this level. And so we're going to have this kind of climactic battle fight as the euro, uh, as the dollar probably just bounces straight up. So I think if we find that over the next couple of weeks, maybe towards non-farm payroll, by the way, this is a reminder that next week, Friday, is non-farm payroll. Um, we're going to find that if all the markets reach those levels at the same time, especially if the dollar hits this level, there is a very good chance because it has bounced and bounced and bounced and bounced and bounced. We are probably and bounced and bounced. We are probably going to find that at that point the euro is going to pull back, the pound is going to pull back. Um, I would say there's a 75, 70 to 90 percent chance that's going to happen. There's a 10 percent chance it'll break through, and if it breaks through, that's fantastic. But it's more likely that it'll pull back. So I'm going to advise you not to get excited and not to buy uh, just below this level. Do not buy below that level. Do not buy below any of those levels for the pound. Don't buy there. You're looking to get out of trades, and let's see what the market does. So you have been warned. So if you buy below that level where we haven't broken through it and it hasn't been proven, if anything, history has shown us it likes to reject that level, and you decide to buy because you feel it's going to break through and you get your ass handed to you on a plate, you have... Uh, you then you need to go and explain that to your coach. All right, and I'm recording this, so there's evidence here that saying you don't take that trade. Cool. Okay, Aussie dollar. Uh, Aussie dollar is very interesting. It's really nice and bullish. Uh, it's been bearish for a while, and we're, this is a very tricky one because it appears to be showing high lows, high highs. If I'm if I go kind of from uh, if we talk about this previous high when it was in a downtrend, and I bring this down, this is a. Uh, was in a downtrend, and I think that was a lower high. Then what happened was we had a alert. So yes, no. And so we have what appears to be a higher high here. This one actually appears to have broken. 
above that one, which is normally an indication that this downtrend is done. And of course, we now appear to be producing a fresh high. So this would indicate that our weekly is in an uptrend. Our daily is very much in an uptrend, overextended from the moving averages, but now very much in an uptrend. And so we have a weekly uptrend and a daily uptrend, which is very bullish. And of course, all we have here is a... Oi, uh, let's get out of that and just uh, move these lines. Is we're still on a downtrend on the monthly. Um, but this is where it gets interesting, as of course, is we're now looking to see if price will reverse, um, but it's still in a downtrend, lower high. So we have this contradiction. The daily is looking bullish, weekly is looking bullish, and all I would say to you is, you know, feel free to trade income generators and trades to the upside. I just want you to have some awareness that we are going to hit a key level of uh, resistance, probably at 9700. We'd sit us nine seven hundred would put us at that level, and uh, that's most likely where we're going to feel some pain. So I would say between now and then we've got some opportunities, and of course it's not over yet. Uh, it's not over yet. If we feel that this is now going to, um, if this downtrend is going to continue, price is actually capable of going all the way back, or as high as um, yeah nine five nine five two five somewhere around there. So price can come all the way back up to here and still reverse and resume that downtrend and still be healthy. If it's going to reverse, I suspect that this is going to be the most likely area in which it's going to reverse. It doesn't have to. I'm just saying that that would, that would mark an area where I would anticipate uh, that it is most likely if it is still going to reverse. And what do you know? That was a previous level of resistance. There we go. So I measured it off the 618 Fibonacci for you master traders. That's the most likely area there. Close to that as well. Um, and that is probably where it's most likely going to reverse. So we'll just put that up there. 9.4. Wow. Is that right? 9.4. Boom. Okay. 9.400. So keep an eye on that level around that number. That is about as far as I think it will go uh, if this downtrend is going to stay intact. So again, I'm just saying go, go long up until that. You've got a good couple of hundred pips before you get there and some good trading opportunities before we get to that. That means that if you look at it on the daily, uh, you've got a very nice level that you can head up to there, um, which is your... So you've got a nice little run, so ideally a nice little income generator. Price will pull back to here and then continue all the way up to there. And if that works well, then you'd be able to bag yourself, you know, two, three hundred pips, which is fantastic. Cool. So Aussie dollar looking nice and bullish there up until that level. Kiwi, very much looking bullish. Definitely looking bullish. Uh, we've produced high lows here, definitely in an uptrend. We've got this level to get through. For some reason, we've just been unable to get through it. Looking really nice and bullish on the daily. Uh, I did an income generator alert on it this week, at which point uh, this bar was pulling back and was showing an income generator setting up. But by the end of the day, it had not closed as an income generator setup and did not, um, and unfortunately, did not uh, go anywhere. So, uh, but the, the trend is gone. It was just that it did not give uh, beginner traders an entry opportunity because it never gave you the signal that you need to take the trade. Uh, let's have a look at the Swissy. We looked at the Swissy before. Still a nice downtrend. It's, you know, we're watching what happens when it gets to that level. We've got to be cautious about that. Um, and let's have a look at the yen pairs because the yen pairs are very twitchy at the moment. Uh, and when I say twitchy, you must understand that in terms of what the... Japanese Central Bank has stated is they're very happy for the Japanese, for the yen, to be anywhere. Uh, in fact, they're quite happy for it to be anywhere between 100 and 120. As long as it's in this area, they're relatively happy. And so, in fact, they're happy where it is now. There's no real pressure from them to do it, uh, to keep it going any higher. But that isn't the only stuff that keeps it moving. You know, traders will keep it moving. The market will keep it moving. Policies will keep it moving. Um, it's really only when it starts to drop down below this where they would start to, to push it. But we've never really had a pullback down to that level. Uh, and we're still looking pretty good. I think we've had a nice little consolidation here on the monthly to these moving averages. And so we're definitely showing some room. You know, we pull back here. We had a beautiful consolidation done. We broke to the upside. We're coming back now, probably just to test that and now looking to continue with that. So I know that you can see here, it's been going nowhere uh, for the Japanese uh, pairs. It's been going nowhere for a while. It, it will probably break to the upside when it's good and ready. So if we jump across and look at the Euro Yen, chart, you can see that actually this is still pushing to the upside. It is still bullish. Make no mistake, still bullish, um, but you're stuck in those trades for a while. How's the pound yen doing? 
Yeah, it's okay. It's broken the low here, but this is all bad behavior. This is all consolidation. So not really tradable, but it doesn't mean that that longer-term trend isn't going to resume itself. And of course, Aussie, and look at that. It has resumed on Aussie, and boom, it is just climbing, rocketing away. Uh, Kiwi in. Kiwi in looking really bullish as well. So we've got, so we've still got that trend is still intact. The the yen trend is still very much intact. You just really want to trade the charts where it is moving. Um, like here, for example, with Swiss yen, it's not really going anywhere, and that's because the Swiss isn't Swiss franc's not really going anywhere, and the CAD charts aren't really going anywhere either. So you've got you haven't really got anything else happening here with CAD yen. No clear trend. But the longer term trend is to the upside. Okay, and it is looking good. Uh, in fact, I think we may start seeing movements happening over the next over the next two weeks. So keep an eye on that um, for those opportunities to go long. Uh, looking at the CAD pairs, we're still bullish at this point. We're overdue for a bit of a, at least a consolidation, but I'm still liking that. We still managed to break up through this and come back, and we're probably going to find ourselves having a beautiful reversal. So if there's income generators here, it's probably not a bad idea income generators on this because you're probably finding this is an income generator and you can place an order around this uh, today tonight tonight so when you're watching this you can go and check if CAD dollars giving you an income generator long and then place it and what we'll probably find is that tomorrow we'll probably find there's a reversal for some reason uh, let's see how Eurocad is then looking so we'll compare this into Eurocad still bullish still very much in an uptrend definitely overextended on the monthly let's go to the weekly still overextended on that yeah overdue for it just needed to come back down to these kind of down here a little bit maybe down to 1500 so it is a bit overextended there fine uh so that income generator from yesterday or that trade alert that i did would not have triggered so we're waiting for that to trigger so that'll just that order can be cancelled and you can create a new order uh here you can see consolidation on the weekly just just it hasn't touched the moving averages taking a bit of a breather, probably in the right area to start looking to go long, so keep an eye on those, Aussie CAD, Aussie CAD of course on its way, because the Aussie dollar is what's been moving a lot, and the Kiwi CAD also moving, because the Kiwi dollar, there we go, is a perfect signal, that's a buy signal, so this is now a trend continuation setup, or a master trader power pivot, so there's a lot of trading opportunities happening that you guys can take uh, immediately, and that's looking quite good, so those trends look set to continue, uh, then we have, uh, so, then we have, let's have a look at some of these Euro pairs, see if there's anything great here. Nothing too great. Still looking like we've got a bit of a lower high. We break that. We're probably going to resume that downtrend. Euro Swissy has pulled back on the weekly, but I'm still in a downtrend on the weekly. Still anticipating, anticipating that it will reverse uh, probably next week. And then we'll see that resume its downtrend. The Euro Aussie, because the Aussie's been moving and the euro hasn't, we found the Aussie has been pushing down. So we've broken these lows, which means we're now effectively in a monthly phase two. Uh, we've just started this uptrend, uptrend, uptrend. So I am expecting to see this probably find uh, some support near where it is now, near where it is now, and start to kick off again. Uh, so it's in the right area. Uh, to find some kind of a support and see if it's going to reverse after that. It might pull back down to the 50, to the 50 moving average, but mm, we'll see. So at this point, I'm not trading it just yet because it looks much more bearish than bullish, but the monthly trend is still up. The weekly trend is now at least down, low, high, low, low, so it's now downtrend. So that means it's a monthly phase two. So I, the longer term trend, I can't tell just yet. Aussie Kiwi, uh, sorry, Euro Kiwi. Still trending very much to the downside, almost more aggressively so, and the daddy just trending. So that looks like that'll keep going. And it's got a previous level of support and resistance to test here. So it's also in that similar area. So we might find we get reversals on this by the end of the week, at which point that longer term trend will resume itself. Uh, yeah, we've seen Euro Aussie, Pound Aussie, same thing, just pushing through, pushing through, coming back down, probably worst case scenario down to connect to the 50 moving average and touch with that previous level of uh, resistance, find support there. Uh, the monthly trend monthly is now officially in a pullback because it was very aggressive. So we had a monthly phase one, phase two, phase one, now in a phase two, probably coming back down to bounce here or potentially come back and test that previous level. Um, ideally, it'll, it'll reverse before then. But it looks like it's going to consistently do that. Uh, so just be aware if you take an income generator short that they might ultimately reverse on you and go long if that is the case, if that monthly trend is going to resume. And Pound Kiwi has got a similar thing here. Okay, so Pound Kiwi is also looking to do a similar thing there. Aussie Kiwi. 
Aussie Kiwi is showing likelihood of reversing. If you look here, we have what we refer to as a double bottom. We've seen where price will come down, bounce, touch and bounce again, pushing very much to the upside, very aggressively. And if you then look at the monthly, there is a very good explanation for this. When you look at that, you'll now realize that that level I've drawn in, uh, I'm actually going to have to take out this part that's coming through for broker feed. We have the ability sometimes to get data from brokers. Um, so all I did there is, like, here we go. So I've got a nice about 30 years worth of history. And you'll see that uh, in, its, in the history, going back here to 95, we found support there. We found support in 2004, support again in 2005. Bit of a rejection here near this level in 2008. We've broken down. We had a rejection in January. Uh, and now it looks as though we're potentially reversing. So just looking to see price at this point, looking to break to the upside. And we, you know what, we never had a pullback. This whole time we never had a pullback on the monthly. So it's not inconceivable at all that we might find price, you know, heads a long way up, certainly back up to that sort of 1.2 level, 1.12 level. Uh, it's definitely overextended. It's definitely hit a historical level, and it's l giving signals of reversing. And on the daily, uh, it's going to be breaking into an uptrend soon. On the weekly, it certainly looks like a double bottom. So a lot of indications here showing that this is going to go, uh, this is going to go all the way up and likely to break that level. So once it breaks that high of that bar, we're officially in a weekly uptrend, and we can start looking to aggressively trade this to the upside. Okay. And our concern, our next big, biggest level of resistance, where if price is intending on taking another run down at that level, it'll reverse at about this level here, which is this previous level of support. It'll come back up here and then touch the 50 moving average and return to that downtrend. But for now, it is looking nice and bullish. In fact, look at, yeah, it's looking good. It's looking really nice. So I would start advising you guys to start looking for Aussie Kiwi trades to the upside. Okay. Aussie Yen. Aussie Yen, nice and bullish. We had a look at that. Aussie CAD, nice and bullish. So Aussie Pair is presenting really good trading opportunities, most of them to the upside, if not all of them to the upside, um, which means Euro Aussie down, Pound Aussie down, but all the other Aussie Pairs to the upside first. Kiwi Swissy, push into the upside. Look at that. Push into the upside. Kiwi Yen to the upside. We had a look at that. And Kiwi CAD push into the upside. That's it. And then we have CADS for C, which is still in this very much in this downtrend and an overdue pullback to the moving averages. Like you can just see how it's touched and touched and touched. So again, next week or the week after, I'd be looking for reversal. And again, that'll mean the price will come close to this monthly pivot and this 50 moving average and then potentially reverse. And so I'll be looking for rejection signals at that point. In terms of Fibonacci retracement, that is probably going to be a 382 if that trend is then looking to reverse or even a 50 fib retracement and still be fine. In fact, a 50 fib retracement puts you at a round number as well as a previous level of support. Boom. So that puts you at 0 0.800000 whatever. And there we go. Connect. So somewhere in that area, nice low test or something bearish would be a fantastic reversal signal. Next, uh, let's go through and have a quick look at gold. I want to bring up gold today. Uh, gold has got a very interesting thing because most people are very bullish on gold. And uh, I want to just point out what's happening here on the monthly chart. I do want to point out to you that uh, we are our previous levels of kind of support. Uh, we had a previous level of resistance up here. We had a rejection there and a rejection there. And our previous level of support is down there. So we've got a couple of things here where it looks as though we might find that price uh, closes next week at the end of the month as a uh, rejection bar. And I've, I just want to point out to you that this is still very much a downtrend um, because we have, if that is the case and we do close that way, we then have lower highs and lower lows. Okay, so let's just copy that. You know, I know I went copy. There it is. And copy. So we've got a downtrend there. We've broken through that level of um, support. We broke through this level of support, broke down, came up, rejected it, came down again, bounced off this level, came up, and now we're rejecting it here. And this one's lower than this one, which means the sellers have actually effectively stepped in even lower than here. Um, now, I'm not saying this is a guarantee. I'm saying I just we have a week to go, and in fact, this week, and this is where we are. This is what's forming here. Then if we do get this at the end of the week, at the end of the month as well, and we break below that, uh, next month, we break to the downside. You're going to find that gold is going to run back down to the 1,200 level, okay, to that run round number there. Uh, and so this is basically what's going to happen is this will go into a downtrend, and of course what will happen then is our weekly will then go into a downtrend as well. 
Okay, so just be aware of that, please. I want to point you in that direction. I know a lot of people like to buy gold. A lot of people like to gamble with gold. Uh, and I'm just going to highlight uh, that very much uh, to you. So uh, one last scan of running through the, the RAND, uh, RAND against the dollar, just to for you South Africans. Let's actually have a look. Let's change that to a monthly and this to a weekly. So we can kind of see what the long-term trend is. Okay, so we have pulled back here. We've given signs of changing and turning around here. The monthly is now broken the low. It's probably on its way back to test this previous uh, level of support. Uh, resistance and find support in that area. So it does look as though it's going to come back down to approximately the lower 10 area. Uh, let's look at the euro. Euro is doing a little bit more of that as well, starting to pull back down, starting to show more signs of coming back down. Uh, overdue, just for overdue for a pullback, and starting to probably come back down to about the 14 level over the next few months. So it's not going to be an immediate thing. Pounds are... Okay, pounds are definitely starting to pull back down, going to head back down towards the 16 area. This is something we've been waiting for for a while, and you can see it did give a bullish signal and then did not reverse. So we're still looking for this to um, to pull back further. Let's have a look here. So, yeah, so that looks as though it's going to head down to that. I mean, we could still get a reversal here, but it just doesn't look like it. It looks like it's now broken the high. We've got a ring high. We're now probably pulling back to these moving averages. And that's the key thing is that it's broken that inside bearish candle inside doji it's broken to the downside which means it's now kind of it's long overdue for a pullback it's probably doing that back down today what is my long-term assessment about where it's going to go well i only i anticipate it's going to reverse and take another run at that and that's over the next that'll be six months eight months nine months almost a year if we get through that then we know where it's going but we have to see what happens at that level this is not necessarily a bad thing um but there it gives some clarity there aussies are we're finding the stuff is still bullish, still pushing through, trying to get through those levels. It has gone on to new highs, so that looks like that's still intact. And the Kiwi are definitely still trying to push on further to get up to that 10 mark uh, and starting to struggle a bit. So, yeah, could be good, could be good. Um, so we've been waiting for that the whole time just to kind of see if there's any potential changes on that in the horizon and just seeing how that might uh, that looks now to be a bit of the case where it's now starting to hit its extremes and starting to come back a bit. Uh, the question then becomes, will it, how far back will it come back to you? And I'm guesstimating not too far. Uh, it'll drop by a small amount and then probably try to resume and then we'll see what happens. And that, that's going to be happening slowly over the next year. Let's have a quick look at oil. Uh, oil, no clear trend here. Um, small moves but no clear trend, and more bullish than bearish. Still maintaining higher lows, still producing high lows, high highs, still bullish. Just done a bit of a pullback now, and at a point where it can reverse. Um, and let's have a look at silver, just so we can see how that looks. Silver still in a downtrend, look at that, but it's got to get to this level. So, wow, that could be, yeah, that could be something interesting for me, sorry, for my own trades. Okay, that, yeah, I don't like this high or low here. Uh, but yeah, I'll be looking for this to see breaks down below that level. That's looking more bearish than bullish at this point in time. The, the, this was looking very bearish about to break to that level. Then it's produced a new high, which is not really that much clear, but we're still producing at least here a lower high. So we're still, uh, we need to see what happens next. We need to produce a high low and a high high, and then I would know, okay, we're heading away. Until then, if we produce a lower high and we keep hitting down, we're going to break to that level. Um, and of course, the silver breaks down to that new low. Then, of course, you can. It would be reasonable to assume gold's going to keep doing that as well. And platinum is not really going anywhere, so there's not much clarity there. Difficult to trade. I mean, easy to trade. Uh, literally, it's buyer bars, then a seller bar, and then it's seller bars, and then buyer bars, and then seller bars, and buyer bars, and seller bars. So, master traders, you can trade swing trading. <laughs> they would literally just trade that. Um, but yeah, this uh, for for beginner traders, not really worthwhile to get into that. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to move on to my tonight's main topic. So I'm going to be, for my trading, I'll be watching the majors. I'll be cautious of non-farm peril next week, Friday. And I'll definitely be keeping an eye on some of those CAD charts. I'll be watching the yen charts. I'll probably be trading the CAD charts. And I'll be definitely keeping an eye on those Aussie and Kiwi charts. Um, right now, the euro and the pound are not there yet. They're busy deciding what they want to do next, and the Swiss here as well. But definitely the charts that are trending, those are the ones I'm still going to be looking for opportunities in, and just keeping an eye on whether they're overextended or not, uh, and looking for those types of setups. Uh, so let me uh, hand over to myself with this pre-recorded uh, thing where I spoke about this trade that I placed, and I, I think 
I hope that you will find this one of the most valuable um, episodes or contributions that I have delivered to date. All right, and I hope you enjoy this. Right, so let's proceed to this perfect trade setup. Now, um, I have to be clear on my use of the words here as in a perfect trade setup. Um, you'll often hear traders say, either professionals or beginner traders say, I took the perfect trade. Now, technically speaking, there is no such thing as a perfect trade. Normally what the person means is that uh, the trade setup, the trade setup, the signal to take the trade was very clear to them. They saw a very, very clear signal why they needed to take the trade. In that moment, there was no doubt in their mind that this trade was shouting at them to take me. They then, they're also normally commenting on their own behavior around taking that trade. They then obviously uh, entered that trade at exactly the right point um, and hit uh, their target and banked the profit um, to the point where they feel that if all their trading was like this, then they would be, you know, they will achieve their dreams. Um, and so it feels like a, a perfect swing at a ball and you swing it and you hit it just right and it just goes exactly where it's supposed to go. Um, or, it, you know, uh, anything in life where it requires a moment of perfection and you achieve it exactly as planned without any hesitation, um, without even any wobble. And so it feels as though you executed it perfectly. Now, I'm choosing to describe this as a perfect trade setup. Now, uh, that's because there are certain trades where the conditions around that trade, uh, the signals combined with the conditions around that trade are uh, very, very, very good. They are just so strong that uh, you could effectively call it a perfect trade setup, um, although ultimately for it to be a perfect trade, it's also, you then have to include how you behaved, how much you risked, what the result of the trade was, and so on and so forth. So I don't really refer to trades as perfect trades, uh, because that has to include my behavior. What I can do is refer to a setup as a perfect trade setup. Now, interestingly enough, you don't need that many signals to have a perfect trade setup. Um, the more signals, the better. What you're going to find is there's probably a minimum requirement of signals you get, and there's quite a few of them, and they're all very strong and very positive. And that then says this is a, a, this setup is so good um, that you have to take it. Doesn't matter whether it's a winner or a loser, but it's so good, it's so strong, you should take it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is it's very interesting here. This uh, the reason I'm doing this is I suddenly realised this was a this was an actual trade I took, um, and at the time. Honestly, I just thought it was an okay setup. I thought it was an okay setup. And what I did was I placed the, uh, I sent an alert out to our clients who subscribe to the company's trade alerts. Uh, there's a subscription option. Our unlimited wealth clients get it automatically. You should be getting it. So if you're an unlimited wealth client and you're watching this and you're not receiving trade alerts in your emails, you need to contact uh, graduate services, graduate support, you need to contact and just, just ask about it, just inquire about it. Um, and for some of our customers who've just attended the Forex or the introductory courses, um, you I don't think you get that automatically. I don't think so. You get the midweek market f focus, but the trade alerts, you know, this year we've done really well. We've, um, <clears throat> I think we've exceeded sort of 60% in the last six months, six, seven months on the trading floor alerts, just from the trades the, the, the traders are taking. The, um, so, I saw this as a trade setup, not a bad one. I just thought, okay, that looks pretty good, and I'll take the trade. And then I picked up my laptop, and I went into the uh, – I had a coaching session with two lovely ladies, sat down, and I was telling them about the trade setup. And while I was describing the trade setup to them, I just kept uncovering more and more and more and more reasons why this was such a good trade. That I, I So the reason I'm telling you about it was that even I – didn't initially recognize what a great trade it was, um, but as I was looking, it was just more and more evidence. And I actually thought I should show you this because whether you're just starting on a trading journey or whether you've been doing it for uh, you know six months to a year, 
these are the kind of trades you really want to be looking for. And um, and I think it's important to describe that even though I kind of picked it up as a good trade, uh, that I didn't realize how good it was. Um, and it just it just has so much evidence. And I think we should just point out why that is. So there's, there's real benefit here for beginner traders as well as master traders. Um, and actually even for, for those of you who, who are trading stocks. Um, because you can see this kind of, it's a pattern. And you can see this on the daily charts on any time frames. But there's a lot, there's a lot I'm about to... Uh, I'm about to dispense uh, a vast amount of trading uh, knowledge and experience into this into this uh, setup. So um, I hopefully this will be one of your prized uh, episodes. Um, right. So let's let's proceed. Uh, let's go down and have a look at the next one. Okay. So first of all, now why was uh, this particular trade so good? Okay. You'll notice at the top I've said okay it was a long trade, so we're buying in this particular time frame, or at least in this particular. A chart, um, and I said that uh, I've, I've described that you could have gone long in the four hourly time frame, two 40 minute time frame, the 60 minute time frame, the one hour time frame, or even the five minute uh, time frame. You could have traded, taken the trade on multiple time frames. So for master traders, you'll get this because you understand, and prop traders, you'll understand, prop platinum traders, you'll know you could enter on different time frames. Um, but the signals were occurring at the same time. This is the most incredible thing. These signals were occurring at the same time on all the different time frames. Like, and that's, and I think that happens a lot more than um, we spot it. But I just saw this stuff, and I'm going to show you this. And uh, the point is that this trade setup actually was available to every single person, no matter whether you were a beginner trader or a master trader. So I'll show you why this was. Um, but you could have taken it on multiple time frames. So um, the reason why was this trade so good? Well, first of all, the general analysis for all our new traders. So this is for everyone who's ever attended one of our Forex courses, who trades the Sniper, the Income Generator, the Pivot strategy, or the uh, Snapback strategy. Um, you're obviously taught about, uh, you're taught about how um, price has to be above the 50 and the 200 EMA on the daily if you want to go long. Um, price are just, you learn about low test bars and you learn about how price can bounce off a trend line um, or off a moving average. In this particular chart we had, and I'm going to show you this, I'm just going to read through this first and I'll show you the chart. We had a monthly uptrend, high lows, high highs. We had a weekly uptrend, high lows, high highs. We had a 2.40 minute uptrend, 60 minute uptrend, and a 5 minute uptrend. Okay, so we had higher time frame, which you should all know. We had higher time frame approval, and we had on each of the time frames of the trade setup was we already had a confirmed uptrend. Price was above the 50 and the 200 EMA on the daily, which is obviously a bullish. Uh, those are bullish conditions. Price had just low tested off the 50 EMA on the daily as well, so beginner traders should have noted that. You should all know that from your course, from your program. Uh, we had had a break of resistance and a retest of support. Now I'm not sure if that's covered in the forex course because I haven't I haven't checked the manual in a while, but this uh, certainly those of you who trade stocks would know about breaking uh, hitting a level of resistance and that level then becoming a level of support. So there had just been a break of resistance and a retest of support. I'll show you this now, and of course we had convergence of the MACD and the RSI indicators. Now it doesn't matter whether you use the MACD or the RSI. I'm actually showing you both here. I'm doing you guys a favor and including traders from all walks of, of our programs kind of things. I want you to see how this, uh, how they overlapped and how they all worked. Everything just worked on this particular trade and I didn't even realize that. So this is essentially what we kind of saw on the charts. I'm going to take you back uh, to this point in time and show you this. I didn't really do, I should have done more snapshots at the time uh, that I took the trade, but anyway. Um, and so just ha have you, I want you to have a look at this and see how this works. Okay, so jump across here and let's just go through and have a look at, uh, at this chart. So uh, I'll do it in this one. I'll just go full screen on this one and I'll just clean it up a little bit. Oh, wow, I just left out a couple of things. Uh, holy cow, so I'm going to take off the pivot point and we'll take these off in RSI and MACD and that's all fine. Let's just bring these down a little bit so that you can see what's going on here. Okay, so first of all, on the monthly, why do we say it's an uptrend? Well, and let's switch this off because I want your brains, I want you to see what we see when we look at this, okay, what you should be looking for as well. Okay, so here we have an uptrend. This is a monthly chart. That means, <clears throat> not that you guys have to look at the monthly, you don't have to. I'm just saying that um, this is a this is a bonus, I think, for beginner traders. So here we go. So we had a downtrend. Uh, we had lower highs. Let's just go and highlight this. So we had, uh, it's tricky, where do I start? Let's start here. Let's start with a low over here, and let's start with a high up at this point. And so what happened was we proceeded to get, um, you know, sort of lower highs, 
uh, coming down. We had another lower high here, followed by a lower low. So this is a downtrend. You should all know this. And then, of course, what happened was we then produced a new high. Now, this is very, very significant for all traders. Um, you should know that the second you then break that particular level, that sort of horizontal level, uh, you then are... that downtrend is now officially over. So the second we broke, you'll notice, by the way, I'm just going to talk you through this as well. Notice our price found support here, found support here, broke through, tested it for resistance, and then headed down. Uh, anyway, in that same level that was then resistance before, uh, price then came up, managed to break through it, then managed to produce a higher low, and then managed to continue that uptrend, and then of course managed to break above this high. So we went from producing a low uh, to a high that had broken this one, to producing a higher low than this one, to producing a new high that was higher than this one. So then we started to produce that. So now we're officially in an uptrend. Oops, move that over there. So we're in an uptrend. My delegates will all know exactly what's going on here. Um, and then producing this to a new high. Okay, so nice little uptrend. Currently, by the way, still in an uptrend. And we will be in an uptrend until we break this low. Okay, so we will stay in this uptrend until that low gets broken or at least until we produce a lower high, lower low. Currently, we are potentially in a bit of a consolidation at the moment, but this is in a nice solid uptrend. Okay, so having shown that the monthly is in an uptrend, and we jump down to the weekly, I want you to see how I'm just, basically what it does is break every monthly bar into more weekly bars, produces, you know, four bars for every month. And you can see here that we're in an uptrend. We're producing high lows, high highs. So at this point, we're now producing high lows over here, uh, and at this point in time, that's what we had managed to produce. So we just mixed up, we went through a monthly consolidation there, and had produced, uh, managed to stay above this and uh, continue upwards. So at that particular point in time, we were still very much in a, we need to produce a lower high, lower low to have a downtrend here, and we were still on that. Um, and then what had happened was, if I go down to the 480 time frame, which is for master traders, this is now the 8 hourly, you won't care too much about it, but uh, it's sufficient for this particular uh, point in time. At that exact moment, when uh, that trade setup was occurring, at that exact moment, um, we were uh, we were essentially now producing high lows, high highs. Okay, we produced a slightly lower low and then pulled back and then bounced off, and we're starting to head up to that. So if I go down, then down to the four hourly time frame, uh, and go back to that particular point. Let's go back and reconstruct it. Uh, what we actually have, now that we zoom in at that moment, because of course you should all know, be familiar with price going through patterns within patterns, and you know your five minutes going one way and your 60 minutes going another, and so that's really what we're looking for. So what had happened at the time was that price had, on this four hourly chart, so if you're, if you're a sniper trader, um, we had a we had a nice little bit of a sort of a bullish bar. Prop traders would recognize this as a bullish signal, and we were producing uh, high lows, high highs. Now, technically speaking, what we knew for a fact was we didn't really know that that was a high low yet. All we knew was that this was an uptrend. We'd gone from low to a high to a high low to a high high, and price was pulling back. But prop traders and master traders would recognize this as a bullish as a bullish signal to go along. And there's a little bit more to it. If you recall, I was talking about how price breaks through a horizontal level. So let's go, I have to go find this, uh, I have to go find this horizontal level now. There we go, so let's pinch this and bring this back because this is a nice little tool to demonstrate this. Um, you can see it even here, even as I'm, I'm on my way to the current price, but you can see here, price found resistance here, broke through bounce, found support. You know, that's a nice <clears throat> standard kind of characteristic of trading. It's one of the most beautiful, most elegant things that trading does. Um, and this is definitely one of the ways in which we make money. So what had happened was in this case, You'll see if we zoom in, price had come up, hit resistance, minor resistance, broken through, uh, broke through on the other side and was coming back and it actually managed to find support. I actually think I had, it was more precise, it was kind of in this area here. So it was just touching there and come through and it was coming back to this area and then it reversed. And that in itself is a really nice strong kind of signal for it to find support. Um, and in fact, it was a little bit more than that. I pulled it up and I'd managed to find uh, there was a test here, there was a multiple test here, and then more tests as we went back, test there, test there, test there. So multiple tests, which qualifies this then as a, as a, as a major level of support or resistance on this time frame, okay, on this time frame, because of multiple touches, that's it. So by definition, multiple touches on this time frame, this then becomes what we qualify as a major <coughs> level of support or resistance. Um, 
So uptrend on that time frame, and of course, if you go down to the 60 minutes on the same chart, sorry about this, to go back in time becomes a real painful uh, experience. We can go back to that level, and let's just do this, uh, go back to that, let's go back to here. There we go. And so this is just the zoom in on that price broken through, bounced, bounced. And actually, there's something really interesting that happens here. So this is the 60-minute time frame. You'll see that there's a there's a nice low test bar here of this level. Price bounced up, came down again, and then we had a, a bit of a red low test there and a, and, a, and a big, nice bounce bar here. Now, what's interesting about this behavior, master traders will recognize a double, a dub, or you should recognize, uh, this is a summary of a double bounce pattern. A double bounce is pretty standard in the trading uh, world. Price comes, hits a level, comes back, hits a level again, and then breaks up, and it breaks that high. So in breaking that high, it goes from a downtrend bang into an uptrend in one single move. And, and so that's fascinating. So in fact, what I did is I, I need to add this. Uh, hold on a second. I'm going to increase this list. So just bear with me. I'm going to go and pause it for a second. Okay, so I just wanted to update one of the slides. This is just phenomenal. Okay, so we had a bit of a double bounce pattern. Now, this is on the 60 minutes. If I go down to the 5 minutes, you'll see lots more bars that show this in more detail. So, uh, okay, so let's go back to that. Let's go down and have a look at that on the 5 minute chart because it's getting a little bit uh, sort of tiring. So, on the 5 minute time frame, and I have to go back to that particular point, uh, which was here. Was it? Here. Wait, wait, wait. Hey, got to find it now. Somewhere here, there's your double bottom. That's right. Okay, so here we go. So if I just zoom in, there was a, that price level. And so price came down, downtrend here, lower highs, lower lows, bounced, bounced again, boom, and then went on to its uh, hit its target, okay, which was up here. Uh, so that's what we refer to as a double bounce. Pretty cool, pretty cool to see that happen. And so that's what was happening on that time frame. And uh, all right, so then uh, what help? So let's just go back to this. We had uh, monthly uptrend, weekly uptrend, 240 minute uptrend, 60 minute uptrend, five minute uptrend at the time. Double bounce uh, pattern on the five minute time frame, which is really cool. Price just above the, well, no, price above the 50 and the 200 on the daily. So let's go in and, and do that then. So go to the daily so I can show you this. And you can see at that particular point in time, uh, which was the 11th actually about here, so it was actually this bar, uh, just a little bit earlier than that. So there we go. So price at that point being above the 50 moving average and the 200, that's obviously what it's supposed to be like. Um, price had just low tested off the 50 EMA, <coughs> excuse me. So you had this nice red low test off the moving average. So most of you should know that we get these low test bars and they bounce off the moving averages. So that had just happened. That was pretty cool. Um, there was a Breakthrough of a resistance and a retest of support, which I showed you on the five minute time frame and the 60 minutes. It's the same level. We broke through it. We found support on it. That's where the double bottom happened. We had convergence of the MACD and RSI indicators. We had a, so let me show you a little bit about this because I think this is important. Most people, most traders, um, and I say this with affection, most traders don't have a clue how to use MACD and RSI indicators. And often, obsess about it like it is the key to success and misuse it and therefore it is completely not constructive to their trading so let's uh let's go ahead and have a look at how we use that in a constructive fashion so at this particular point in time we're on the 60 minutes at that particular point in time so we've got what looks to be a very nice setup and the reason it works so well uh is let's talk about how why we believe uh, we have this. Um, really what we're looking for, and I'll show you this on multiple time frames, okay? And I have to do it this way. This is the boring way of doing it, but it's worth it because uh, we, we're, what we're looking to do, and this is the correct way to do it, is I've got both RSI and MACD here. This is RSI 6 or 14. 14, that's fine. Default settings, default, standard, standard, default settings. Um, and so what I'm looking to do is, in principle, we're looking to see if this trend is still intact. And all you do, it's very, very straightforward, is you must understand that we need to keep this generally very close. This data can expire quite quickly, and we want to keep it relevant to what we're looking at on the charts. So what all we're really doing is seeing that as we're getting new uh, highs in price, 
So you'll notice how we go up to this high, pull back, and go up to this high and pull back. What we're then looking for is to get a similar, I, I have to do this manually because I can't copy it across. Um, we're then looking to get a similar price uh, re reaction on these time frames. So where we get that, we get a high there, and where we get a high here, we get a new high there. So what you'll notice is we've got higher highs here, we've got higher highs here, so that shows convergence, and of course, and I'm going to do it, I'll do this slowly and surely. Here we go, there we go, and we have lovely convergence there. Okay, so in other words, what's happening in terms of highs here, fresh highs in price here, and fresh highs in price here is convergence. That's what it is. So that tells me that this trend, the momentum, is nice and healthy. So ask yourself if this is how you're using it, because this is obviously how you should be doing it. Prices pull back here, and prices pull back here. Prices pull back here. This is fine. So this is not, we don't use the oversold, overbought thing. That uh, that is not um, what I'm. What I'm. The whole point of this exercise, okay, for those of you who I'm almost certain some of you listening are finding trading difficult because it's difficult for everybody at a particular point in the beginning. And I promise you, it gets easier when you understand how to read the chart properly and how when you know. This is what the whole point of this exercise is for me to show you all the things that we look at and why it, it's a good setup. Um, and if you're struggling, then this is exactly what I'm trying to cover with you. So. Uh, we all go through it. Absolutely everyone goes through it. Uh, and uh, normally we find that the reason we struggle as traders is because we're stubborn. We don't want to change the way we trade because we feel like we've got some things right and yet we keep losing money. And it's normally because you kind of have some things right, but you might not have other things right. And those other things just keep wiping out your, your wins or just keep sabotaging you. So, And one of the key ones is divergence. Most people don't really understand that, you, that how divergence works. They weigh you sort of you just read too much into it. So at this point, well, all I'm really doing is fresh highs in price, fresh highs here, and looking for that. We don't use oversold and overbought because that does not, the, this exercise is to get you to make, to get your win ratio up to 70, 80, or 90% of your trades. And so this is very specific stuff. You need to be doing this kind of correctly. And so we're looking to see that happen. Um, and this is sort of the correct way to do it. Oversold, overbought does not give you 70 to 80 or 90% uh, consistent winnings. I've never heard of anyone, even on YouTube anyway, getting consistent results like that with using it oversold, overbought. So this is the way you do it. Um, okay, so we've got fresh prices and highs, and they all look really good. Um, and we can go check it on a higher time frame as well. I'm going to, it's probably going to, wreck it but let's go back to this uh, thing let's go back to this um, switch off these things here so all i saw was just uh, master traders for you master traders out there all i saw was a power pivot setup i just saw a breakthrough and a retest and a power pivot setup which is a nice little bias bar okay so price uh, broke through here and let's go through and here you can see very simple at that particular point in time let's go and just go back to that particular bar this is what i saw there we go and so we had really nice fresh highs in price, fresh highs here, this all looked good. Over here, by the way, is our fresh lows, and there's our fresh highs. Everything good. This is convergence with both of these, absolutely perfect. Like, just amazing. Okay. For master traders, this is what caught my eye on the 60 minutes, is I saw a buyer's bar, a breakthrough and a retest, and a buyer's bar. That's it. Okay. It was kind of, that was it, and I saw it happening on the... 60 minutes and the 240 at the same time, that's it. And I thought to take the trade. So for you beginner traders, well, what I wanted to show you here was convergence, how convergence must be used correctly, and how we have, and it's very fresh. So I'm only using it on my most recent, two recent highs in an uptrend, or two recent lows in a downtrend. That's it. Okay, looking good. Next. Uh, let's go see uh, see what else worked about this. This is insane. Um, I've never, I don't think I've ever noticed a trade like this before, but I'm, they obviously exist. I just didn't notice this. For master traders, we had a power pivot reversal bar on the 60 minute, the 240 and the 480 timeframes at exactly the same time. So let me explain to you what that means. Um, that means that while I was seeing a signal happening here on the four hourly, um, my daddy was already kicking off. Uh, my eight hourly was producing uh, a setup at that time, this was in motion, which is phenomenal to see this happen. At that exact moment, I had a buyer's bar forming here uh, on the eight hourly as well as on the 60 minutes. I would have had that happening. So to go back and show you that as well. So my 60 minutes was showing me that uh, reversal bar, which was actually this one there. Sorry, I have to, sh I have to keep doing it this way. Um, 
there we go. So I had a bullish bar there, a nice little bullish power pivot. Technically, that's also power pivot according to the rules, but that's fine because I'm looking for a reversal bar. It was also a bullish bar according to props. That was a trend continuation setup. Uh, it's also uh, an engulfing bar, engulfs these two previous bars. I mean, that's huge. In fact, that's not even on the list. That should be on the list. So on multiple time frames, I saw this reversal bar occurring at exactly the same moment, and each one is a bullish continuation bar. They're almost identical in shape, and it's a different time frame, which is phenomenal. And the five minutes had a double bottom with bullish bars, probably a low test on that five-minute time frame. Um, we had pivot level support. So if we introduce our daily pivot levels, if I go and throw that on, I'll do it here on the 60-minute time frame here. Uh, it can be the five minutes. It doesn't make a difference. It's going to put them in the same place. Uh, that was So if I go here and throw in the formulas for the pivot point. Uh -huh. Where are they? Oh, now it's sulking because I have to go. There we go. And I have to go back because it was complaining. It doesn't like me to play with it like that. So regardless of which way you had wanted to do it, it would have given you. Oh, you see, it really doesn't like me doing this. Man. Okay. Um... Let me show, I'll just, I'll use another pivot one just to show you where they were at the time. It's the same, same levels, it's just a different one, which is this one. Boom. Come on, guys. Don't be, pain, don't be difficult like this. Otherwise, I'm going to pause this video and get it all sorted. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I swear I had this up earlier. Come on. Oh, yeah. Okay, hold on. I'm going to pause the video and see if I can get this sorted. There we go. Got it fixed. Okay, so I know what it was. It was just a playback tool. Okay, so at this particular point in time, uh, this bar was coming up to the pivot level. And um, also what I'd like you to observe is that it, it had found support even if I take off all these moving averages. It was finding support on that on the on the one pivot level, which is your S1, if you you learnt about your pivot levels, S1, that's your pivot and that's your R1. And so it had, it had formed and found support on that level and was now on its way up to this pivot. So this becomes a pivot trade for all of you pivot traders um, because, of course, now the beauty is, is that, you know, you kind of got your stop down here. It's going to break through that and head on to your target. And you can see that that risk reward for the pivot traders, for you guys, beginner traders, uh, or at least, no, not beginner traders, but, you know, new traders, 1.62 to 1. So nice little, nice little trade setup occurring, but finding support on the pivot level and about to break through that particular uh, pivot level. Um, so that was phenomenal. Uh, now I have to show you this because this was amazing. Uh, I didn't even know this, but for the, those of you who use your uh, monthly and weekly pivots, um, for you for you guys using the monthly and weekly pivots, this is incredible. I didn't even notice this. There's my monthly and weekly pivot levels, and bang, we were sitting right on them, both of them. I mean, to have your monthly and weekly pivots within like a pip of each other and your uh, S1 on your daily intraday pivot level is unbelievable. We had a breakthrough and a retest here, a um, bit of a low test reaction there. Um, this horizontal level, uh, which is incredible, if I, I'll take the whole thing away, just delete that and then put in an actual official one. Once you put that level in, what I'd like you to observe was that uh, it occurred right near a round number of uh, 1.5300, just the two zeros giving me that extra bit of support. So you had this horizontal level here, you had your weekly pivot, your monthly pivot, and of course you had um, the normal pivot points here, there as well. That's an insane kind of amount of support the price had managed to find, and that's why double bottoms for various reasons, but that's, <laughs> that's like incredible. Um, Let's go back to this. So we had uh, pivot level support down here at the bottom. We had weekly and monthly pivot support as well. Like That's phenomenal to have them all line up like that. Um, let's see through. We had moving average support of the 10, the 20, the 50, the 100, the 200. So no matter what you were doing, uh, when you introduce those moving averages into the chart, 20, 50, 2, 20, and 10, and you can check the 100 in as well, we were sitting right on top of them. So it gets a bit messy now. But at the time, price had actually come back and was sitting on top of all those moving averages. Okay, so what I can do is start to try and clear it up a bit. Let's bring this down a little bit, clear up the chart just so that you guys can see this stuff. Take off, switch off those pivots. 
just switch them off to clear it up a bit, and you'll see how price at the time uh, was on 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 each of those time frames. By the way, on each time frame, it was sitting on those moving averages. So imagine that. Imagine that on your 60 minutes, your five minutes, or your four hourly or your eight hourly price was sitting on the 50 and the 200 and the 20. It was just like holy cow. It was a duplicate on every single time frame. Um, I didn't, you see, that's the point is I didn't spot all this until I was explaining it and going, holy cow, and there's that, and there's that. Uh, we had Fibonacci support, okay, off multiple cycles. Multiple cycles offering you Fibonacci clusters and multiple time frames, okay, which is similar, it's kind of the same idea. So let's take that away so I can show you, take the moving averages away so I can show you each element individually. Fibonacci retracement from this cycle, so you know as a uh, prop, you know you measure the most recent cycle. And boom, we're sitting on the 50 foot retracement at that point, which is fine. That's fantastic. If you do measure it from the previous cycle, you get a 382 retracement. Okay, so depending on which cycle you measure it from, you get a Fibonacci level. So level within a level, which is a nested level, which is uh, uh, which is um, referred to as a cluster. That's what it's known as. If we go to another lower time frame, the 60 minutes, um, you can measure it from different ones. Which ones did I measure it from? I don't know. It was something else. I was measuring that, and it sits on the 786. And then, what did I do? I measured it from here, and it was sitting on 50. And then I measured it from there, and it's still sitting on the 50 at that point. Oh, it was sitting on the 302 at that level, and you measure it from here, and it's sitting on that. So multiple time frames, you just got Fibonacci, 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 weekly pivot levels, monthly pivot levels, daily S1, moving averages of multiple time frames, horizontal level, Round number, um, price action signals. So you had bullish continuation bars or reversal bars, depending on which way you want to approach it. Uh, they're the same thing. Moving average, uh, moving averages. Okay, so we switch our moving averages on, and we'll just switch on 20 and 50, whatever, and 200, and you'll see they're in the correct order. They're in the correct order. 50 at 200, 50, 20. They're uh, separated. So they're starting to fan out as well, and uh, they're angling up as we head up here. They're angling up at this exact moment. They're going flat, but the angles up generally from previously. Um, so order angle separation, absolutely amazing. And on multiple time frames, it was doing that. So just where price had touched, they were it just squashing them together in some of them. But on as you zoomed in, it would just it, they're on in the correct order and just starting to do that. Major support level where price had touched it more than twice. On the support level to round number 1.533. So for you new traders, this is just going to be what? Like what? There's just so much information here. For master traders, you know your power pivot checklist. You know you should be recognizing a lot of this stuff. For you uh, prop platinum and prop traders, you get trend continuation. You'll understand this. I left out, of course, trend line uh, support. So there we go. Checking in trend line support. Bang. Okay, you've got that. Um, I mean, there's just no excuses here. This was just a phenomenal. I'm not saying you should have taken this trade. It happened. Uh, it happened in the middle of the day, just randomly. So I'm not saying if you, I'm saying if you took it, it's just. Um, and I took it randomly. I just saw the setup. I happened to be on the chart as the bar was forming, and I just and I saw. Oh, that's nice. That's bullish and that's bullish. And I just placed the order, placed the order, and placed the alert, and um, the uh, trade went out. So. Uh, if you hadn't, if you didn't take it, don't stress. I'm just showing you guys what a great trade setup can look like, and they, I think they occur quite a bit. I mean, I, uh, you know, there must be a few of them a week, depending on the time frame you look at. But just it had so much going for it, and I didn't even see that. So, uh, multiple. The, the beauty of this is that traders around the world, lots of traders would have taken the trade, even if they only used Fibonacci or if they only used uh, price action, if they just used moving averages. If it was a sniper, they would have seen a bounce in the moving averages. There were a whole lot of things. Now, the interesting thing is for a master trader, you'd be looking to take profit. So if our previous high was here, that's our previous high, uh, what we'd be looking to do as a master trader is to take the trade all the way up to that. So we'd be trading, we'd be trailing our stop a different method and more advanced method uh, taken on up to that. But this distance here where we measure, uh, so if we think of this then, uh, that's our that's our horizontal level. If I put in where I would have placed my stop, because this the most sensible place to put your stop would have been a uh, pretty fair place to do it, would have been here. Uh, my entry would have been pretty much at that pivot level, no matter what way you were doing it as a prop trader or as a normal trader, and most likely you would have taken uh, profit at this particular. So you're looking at about, it ended up being about, if this is your risk, that trade setup ended up being, uh, you know, ended up being about a two to one. I don't know what it was. Uh, a two. I do know what it was. Sorry, I did actually measure it. I'll show you now. I'll show you the trade call. Um, 
what, I, what I'd like you to take away from this was that this it didn't matter really what you know it didn't it doesn't matter really whether you were uh, using the sniper the pivot level uh, uh, prop platinum stuff or master traders you all would have taken the same trade which is amazing um, and I just wanted to show you why it's uh, it's uh, it was such a great trade that it was beautiful it was a beautiful thing um, it was like a perfect storm but with good stuff instead of bad stuff uh, and uh, you know we you know we get those we get the perfect storm good stuff and the perfect storm bad stuff and you, you get there everyone gets there on a, on a, and I, I just you know I saw there were there were you know nearly 20 reasons to take the trade and I only saw three or four of them I probably saw a bit more than that unconsciously um, my brain just said yeah that's a good trade setup take it um, but I'm saying once you break it down there's so many things so you, when you're sitting with your coach you what you want is you want your coach because your coach the problem is as you get better at trading there are things that beginner traders haven't quite learned yet that as a master trader you it's unconscious you you don't even think about it anymore and so you need to get your coach to break down why exactly down to the nuts and bolts why they think a trade is good or bad because they sometimes they might not say to you oh i wouldn't take it um because it's going the wrong way or something and and what they mean is you know it's not in an uptrend and they need to spell that out to you as to what a trend is so you need to you know when you're spending time with your coach you need to write down everything that they say why it's a good trade or why it's a bad trade so that you can that becomes reinforced in your in your brain um, so what I did was I went and we have a live trading this is our application for posting these live trades so I went and posted the trade here uh, let's just go and have a look at this and so my original statement I've, I haven't read it until now I just said this trade actually looks very good we have higher time frame uptrends and bullish reversal bars on 60 minutes 240 minutes and 40 minutes plus a low test on all time frames so that's what I said at the exact moment the trade was happening um, and I gave an entry price on the target and I put it as a master trader call, okay, because I did that, because um, <clears throat> I guess I didn't look at the pivot levels. That's why I didn't see the pivot levels. So um, I just saw the price action stuff. So, uh, and then, of course, this one hit target, and it produced a 2.72% uh, profit, which is really nice. And it hits it, I think it was that day or the next day. I think it was that day or the next day, which is not bad. Um, and so that was a nice trade to take for that for, for the account. Um yeah, and I wanted to kind of take you through that. So I'm hoping that was uh, constructive for you. Um, just see what else. Okay, so yeah, so ways in which this could have been traded. Uh, it could have been a pivot trade long for new traders or a sniper trader for new traders. Okay, so uh, you still would have made 1% or another. The pivot trade, you would have made 1.62%. Um, for master traders, it was a power pivot trade reversal or a double bottom, whichever way you want to do that. It was a trend continuation for Prop Platinum because you guys can trade the four hourly, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and of course, Prop Platinum, you can now see why that was. You all know that was a good setup. Uh, master traders, you would also know that as well. Uh, and beginner traders, this was obviously the most information for all of you. So yeah, it was posted as a master trade alert and it resulted in a bank profit of 2.72. And I think the problem was that uh, I wasn't expecting it to move as quickly as it did. So it's possible that people would have received the alert and not had time to place the order uh, and not even ha had time to evaluate the trade alert um, sometimes that happens you know it's, as it's as it's triggering we kind of place the alert but we try and give you guys anything from like that's why we like the end of day stuff because it gives people enough time to get home and place the order um, but yeah so uh, I wanted to take you through and I hope that's been constructive for you just to show you all the different reasons why this trade was a good one and this stuff is universal by the way so if you you know um, for you guys I wanted to show you that this is universal there's more details more reasons to take the trade multiple strategies ways you could place your targets and you can get more out of that trade um, but there was money in that for everyone um, and so and there was stuff there that worked really well for beginner traders why to take the trade a lot of that stuff so hopefully you're paying attention to that and I hope you've enjoyed this um, and uh, just yeah just uh, just keep at it um, you know keep snap take snap snapshots of all your trades and why you want to take them and then start to focus on price being above the 15 the 200 and prices bouncing off a moving average and it's you know it's found support and convergence and all those different things that everyone can do there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to do it it should be right there um, from the start of your journey that's it i'm going to wrap up on this and uh, i hope uh, that you've enjoyed this week's episode i will try and do this more often i will try to record trades live trades um and take you guys through them okay thank you very much